Hello, my name is Claire Haverson McCartney and I'm going to be talking on behalf of Roots to Wellbeing on five ways to mental health. So I have chosen the subject of take notice because the person who is the most happy in the room, who appears to be completely together with everything in their life, could be the person who's suffering. So it's, it's about taking notice of yourself and your own emotions. So when you get up in the morning, how do you feel? You know, like what's going on in your own internal dialogue? And also it's about others as well in your community. of What is going on with that person? You know, and being able to talk to people about your own mental health and hopefully then they will open up. I mean, this is quite difficult for me to open up because it's such a lengthy subject and um, you're bearing your soul really, but I do stand-up comedy, so I bear my soul anyway. It don't really matter, does it? Um, yeah, what keeps me well? Well, I'm on medication, quetiapin, and it makes me sleep because I wasn't sleeping. My anxiety was just hitting the roof <laughs> you know especially at the moment what's going on in the world and like, I do have OCD cleaning anyway so all this hand wash stuff is like completely normal to me I disinfect everything <laughs> anyway completely normal um so yeah that keeps me well like I think if I didn't have that medication to calm me down I would actually be a nervous wreck that's a ship in the bottom of the ocean. I'm writing Christmas cracker jokes. So, yeah, and um, obviously my yoga. I've done yoga for years now. I studied in India, so it's something that's in, in me. It's like a, a regimental thing that I do every day. And I do a bit of cardio because I'm getting a bit weighty because I've got thyroid problems. <laughs> I'm on thyroxine as well. Just shake me. I'm just full of, like, medication. And also mindfulness and meditation, and I have been doing Reiki for years, so I do self-Reiki. And yeah, like juicing as well. Um, I was on Channel 5, plug it, <laughs> on Channel 5 this year in February about juicing. That's really important to get your vitamins. Um, I take vitamins as well, look after myself, drink lots of water. It's all about self-care, because no one's going to look after you are they really? You've got to do it yourself. You're your own responsibility for your own life and your own happiness and whatever you want to manifest in that life. So really quickly, because um, I could talk about myself forever. <laughs> oh. Yeah, my experience and my journey. Um, oh God, where do I start? I was 15 and I got epilepsy and uh, that was a bit of a surprise. I spent a lot of time in hospital when I should have been at school and I had amazing teachers, but that put me in the neurodiverse bracket. So now I have horrendous migraines um, and I'm on meds for that. But that also goes with a chemical imbalance in my brain. I was knocked unconscious in a car accident when I was 21. And when you're knocked unconscious, it can uh, damage your brain <laughs> a little bit. Um, I don't know why I'm laughing. Comedy's tragedy plus time. That's what my good friend, my good friend, I'm so famous. <laughs> Omid de Jalili said, comedy's tragedy plus time. I think Woody Allen actually said that. But yeah, as you get older, you tend to find humour in most things. But yeah, I was knocked unconscious and it changed my brain chemistry. So I'm definitely neurodiverse. Um... Yeah, and then I had a breakdown, hey, break it down, in a, a tower block when I was placed by the council in a bedsit in the tower block, surrounded by absolutely awful, unsavoury men. Ah, cheers for that! And uh, yeah, I ended up in an ambulance having a massive panic attack and a mental breakdown. So, <laughs> I would have been alright if I hadn't been placed there, but thanks for that. Maybe, well... A breakdown is a breakthrough, according to Osho, the guru. And also, apparently, if you don't crack open, then the light doesn't get in. 
I think Leonard Cohen said that. But let's leave the philosophy to all your books. <laughs> Hopefully you're reading Wayne Dyer um, and Louise Hay. So yeah, um, that happened and it's been a long journey to try and get a decent psychiatrist who understands my spiritual beliefs and where I'm coming from and my soul journey as well. I'm always, always wary of these scientific people because I think spirituality and scientific, scientific people should actually be merging together, especially now, but they don't like that, do they? They're like, I'm a psychologist, I can't talk about that, I can't talk about why you're seeing angels and stuff. Yeah, they don't like that. So how did you find your passion? Yeah, I found my passion by accident. I was chosen, when I lived in Newquay, I was a yoga teacher and a gym instructor, and I was chosen for a reality TV, TV show called Are You Destined For More? That's the working title. Ended up being called Life Coaches From Hell. Sorry, I'm massaging my third eye in. Um, yeah, and I was, it was all by fluke, all by mistake. Um, how I found my passion and then I saw myself on TV that was in 2007 in the Radio Times I didn't have a TV because I was living a surfy lifestyle in Newquay and it coincided with my thyroid breakdown I got really ill and I had to come back to Harlow where I was born and my mum had to look after me for a little while and then um, I did my TV presenter training course I met some fabulous people I got to interview Frank Bruno, Glenn Hoddle George Jupiter, Sandra Dickinson, Maxi Priest, Jeff Brazier, some really fantastic people. Got myself a few show reels together. Then I did my acting training. So I was really, really following my passion. Then I got into doing character comedy, impressions. Some of them got on telly, not amazingly. I'm not famous, just little snippets. And then I've been doing Edinburgh Fringe the last, you know, since 2012 and stand up. So yeah, that is my passion. I don't think I'd have ever found my passion if I hadn't had suffered, they always say suffering comes to enlightenment, don't they? So if my thyroid had never broken down, I'd have never come back to Arlo and I'd have never done them courses and I'd never done what I've done, you know. And I'm not saying it's been great because it isn't because I've been penniless for years and I've battled my own mental health. So like I said, it's about take notice. Just because I'm smiling, I'm like, hey, da -na 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 -na, doesn't mean... I'm happy, alright, oh. um, yeah, so the emotions I went through, well, I've got a mood swing, I've got a mood roundabout and a slide, I've got the whole shebang, you know, um, but that's, that's what drama is, let's all just have a drama, it makes life so much more exciting, doesn't it, yes, um, yeah, I had to, the emotions I went through to find something that was right for me. I mean, like I was teaching yoga, um, which was great, but it wasn't really my passion. Like that's about giving so much of yourself, and I gave so much of myself to my clients that my whole body broke down and I suffered myself. I mean, yeah, great karma points. And apparently, according to like all the spiritual people, my rewards are going to be in the afterlife. <gasps> Rather have them now. I'd rather be living in a mansion with a Ferrari and not a council flat with a bike. Cheers. But who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah, the service I provide. Well, I don't provide a service, really. But uh, Michael Casey, what a fabulous man who runs your Harlow. He's a journalist. He said, Claire, do you make people laugh? And I'm like, hmm, well, that's debatable because on Britain's Got Talent, Simon Cowell didn't really laugh. And my impressions. <laughs> Alicia Dixon did. Cheers, love. But, you know, comedy is subjective after all. But that is it. You know, I'm the joker of the pack. And that's the way it is. I just burped in my own mouth. Maybe it's time to leave. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I would love to have a comedy club in the town. I've tried it before. It's hard. But I would like my own space, my own space, please. And I've asked Robert House, and when Boris, right, gives us some money, injects it into Harlow, I would love a space with other people, of course, um, where, you know, maybe I'll go back to providing a service of teaching yoga, a little bit of meditation, mindfulness. I am trained in it. I did live in India and study it and America, so I could give back doing that. But it would have to be right for me. It'd have to be the right space. I couldn't do it if it felt weird. And then we could maybe turn it into a comedy club in the evening. What a great idea. What a great vision to look at. 
when we get out of this this lockdown uh, but yeah i could talk about this in a lot more you know depth but i'm not gonna because my mental health journey has been a personal journey and it is to everybody so what i want to say is take notice of people around you and check in on them especially at the moment like how are you how are you feeling like a little text you know because the happiest people are the ones who have experienced the most pain because buddha said that all suffering leads to enlightenment and when you see enlightened people they are the crazy ones they are the crazies because they know that this is just a frequency that we live on and they live outside of the box <laughs> because there is no box there are no walls we are infinite but I'm turning into Russell Brand now so I'm gonna go but thank you very much and it's been wonderful to represent Roots to Wellbeing's Five Ways to Mental Health and my subject of take notice. So take notice of yourself, nurture yourself, self-care. It's all about self-care. And then once you, it's like the Maslow theory, once you take care of yourself and ground yourself, then everything else will fall into place and you can care for others. So yeah nurture your talents whatever they may be and look after yourself and take notice about how you feel what's going on i know the weather oh the weather influences me a lot and my mood um but yeah it's about taking notice of everybody around you and not judging people because you don't know what someone's journey is you know you don't you don't um, you don't know what that last thing that just sent them over the edge and changed their brain chemistry. You don't know. So it's about taking notice of other people's journeys as well, respecting their journeys and respecting your own. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the videos in this subject and get in touch with me if you want to. Uh, I'm Claire Harrison McCartney. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much. Namaste.